an LED pin spot from eBay. I have looked at one of these before and I just wanted to see how things have changed. It was quite some time ago, so, you know, this is, seems to be a standard thing on eBay. It's described as 5 watt single colour, right, for a start. It's not 5 watt, it's not even remotely 5 watt, but 5 watt single colour LED pin spotlight, strong spotlights, beam landscape, stage lamp. And this particular one came from a seller called Good Quality Mall and was shipped within the UK. There was another seller selling them a bit cheaper than the £8.19, but they would not ship uh, to the Isle of Man, so they don't get a mention. Well, there you go. Uh, the beams they show here are actually pretty accurate because um, if you point this at a wall from a considerable distance, the divergence is actually quite low. This is probably, as you notice, a blue one. Let me just do you a quick doodle to give you an indication of divergence. So, over a distance from here, shining from that point, it diverges over the space of six meters, which equates to about 20 feet, 20 feet. It goes to 250 millimeters, uh, which equates to 10 inch. So over a throw of 20 feet, it goes to a 10 inch square like this, six meters, 250 millimeter square, which is actually really good. And it is distinctly square. It's very clearly the image of the actual chip that's being projected. But if you were to project it much closer, like here in the bench, it does look quite round. But I think that's largely just the shaping of the beam as it's coming out this sort of tunnel. Uh, let's check the power out. So I'll bring up the flickery hoppy. I've got this plugged into an adapter at the moment. I shall plug the adapter in there. I'll just leave it in there. Power consumption, 21 milliamps, 247 volts, the local supply at the moment. 2.6 watts. So half, that's the whole fixture, that's the driver and everything is 2.6 watts. Roughly 0.5 power factor, that's what you'd expect. It is perhaps one or two watts in the LED, not really sure. We'll find that out. We'll open it up. And we'll test that. Details about its construction. The front of the body is plastic. The back is metal. There's a little chip out the lens suggesting that this is glass. And it is held in by, by a metal clip. Not sure how easy that would be to get out. Just uh, I'm not sure it's a good idea even taking it out without... Oh, there it goes. Very similar to the way the lamps were held in some of the older disco lights and power cans, things like that. I have a horrible feeling I'm going to end up breaking this lens. Nope, there it goes. It's glued in as well. Oh, that's annoying. But it does look like a glass lens. Let's see if I can just prise that up without bursting anything. Is it going to come out? It's kind of wanting to come out. It's a fairly chunky glass lens. Well, there you go. Tooth test, yes, it's definitely glass. And that's revealing inside another lens with an LED underneath. Okay, let's take the back off it. The back is, let's use the correct screwdriver, the back is made of metal with a black coating on it, but the body is made of plastic. The metal will be being used as a heat sink. And if I recall, Oh, from the previous one, it looks as though it was fairly similar construction, albeit in black plastic inside. It had a standard driver and then just that mount above a standard Luxian star style LED. If you're noticing the sticky plaster on the finger, that's to save the squeamish from what I did earlier on. While I was trying to pry something open with a very big screwdriver and it slipped because it was curved and took a chunk out, it's quite unpleasant. I narrowly missed actually taking the nail off. These things happen. So once we get this off, it's very similar to the previous one. We've got the driver, which they've skimped. They've not even got one in a box. That's very cheap. They've got the holes to actually mount a proper driver, but they've used a little cheapy driver here. Stuck on with double-sided tape. Very gooey, spongy double-sided tape. In a sense, it would have been nice if they'd thermally coupled that to the 
to the actual heat sink because the driver itself is going to get pretty hot. It feels quite warm having had it on for a while. We shall test that. We shall look at it thermally and see what it's like. Let's take a look at the LED itself. So we've got what appears to be a plastic lens. Yeah, that's plastic. On a little support here. Let's take that off and see what's underneath. Ooh, adjustable spacers. That does allude to the possibility with washers of actually packing that up. So the previous one I looked at, the LED was glued in. This one is not glued in by the look of it. It is screwed in with a couple of screws and it looks like one of those Cree style LEDs. So you can get replacement LEDs on eBay if you want to service it or change the color or customize. There is no heatsink compound that I can see. No heatsink compound, okay. But it is, well, it's pressed against powder coating. It'd be nice if that had just been buffed down to the bare metal. Because it is quite a good heatsink. Also, it's notable that there's a wee dimple under. I wonder why that is. I wonder if there's some specific reason for that. A warping thing or something? Don't know. Let's open the power supply up. My, my snips in. This is probably going to have... Well, is it going to be one of the... Um, bright power type LEDs. Uh, LEDs, the driver chips. So many of them are. But then there's so many copies now. Although bright power were pretty early in the industry for doing, creating these. Let's uh, stick my finger across the capacitor first. Yes, it's fully discharged. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Let's get my little dinky eBay magnifying glass illuminated one. HA3021. Now, okay, so what if I screw this back down? It's basically, it's a uh, single driver chip, not really much circuitry associated with that. There's a coupling capacitor, there's a sent resistor, uh, a control resistor. A diode in the output. Uh, there's a tiny little capacitor over here. It's just a basic, simple switching supply. Is that a 4.7 microfarad capacitor? 4.7 microfarad it is 400 volt. It's just a generic little power supply. This is good. This is very good because it means that when they fail, I don't know if this is actually even going to fit in. If you heard a loud clatter there, it's just because I dropped a big cob on the uh, camera. Is this going to fit across those? No, it's not. It's designed for smaller units. How much space is there in here? Oh, that could fit in. Yeah, you could potentially fit in a standard power supply in a case. The original one did have that. There are other power supplies you can get, like this one. 3 to 12 volts, 300 milliamp. Let's measure the current through that LED. I'm not even going to screw it onto the heat sink. Let's just uh, get the meter. I shall zoom out of it here. Uh, let's get the meter and I've just shuffled everything about. So let's see if I can even find the meter. There's the meter. Let's clamp this round, the little Unity, UT210E. Um, and we'll set it to the two amp range. I shall get the coil away from that as far away as possible. So we can just try and measure the current through. Actually, let's uh, not screen it with the metal housing there. So let's see if we can get a current reading with this. If I don't get a reliable current reading with this, and ideally it would be in the centre of the, the jaws, uh, but if I can't get it, we'll use a different meter. So let's zero that out. Let's plug this into the adapter. And is it just going to be generic 300 milliamp? It's 550 milliamp. So that kind of suggests it's a kind of, it's running the LED at just short of two watts. So there's not too much being lost in the power supply. Okay. And that also suggests that if you are going to get a replacement uh, driver for it, then you'll have to get one rated for a three watt LED to drive that. I would say with a natural three watt driver, it might push the LED a little bit harder, which would be quite nice in a way because that would increase the brightness a tad. But the options are there. It's a good base for your own projects. You can, if you put a different LED in, using packers, 
These are different sizes, these packers. Uh, by using three millimetre washers, you should be able to pack that up and up and down and fine tune it to an exact LED. Um, a little bit of heat sink compound there would be quite nice. Even you could buff that off just to get it flat and get a good proper mating onto it. And eBay is awash with these LEDs in a, a wide range of colours. This one says Cree on it. I think we'll just take that with a pinch of salt. Uh, and the power supply is just generic and standard. So ultimately, everything in here is pretty much serviceable. I noticed that also that uh, probably to allow for the fact that they wanted a bit of uh, depth to actually screw one of these modules in, they've got little raised pillars there, which will probably let the air circulate around the power supply, although sandwiching it against the metal would have been nice, but they, then they couldn't have the threaded inserts. And what are these for then? Uh, oh no, I'm talking crap, am I? They're for actually supporting the lens, and that's for supporting the LED. Oh, uh, let's let's try and try and pay attention, Clive. But there we go. It's fine for what it is. It's quite nice. It's got the glass lenses. It's quite nice. It's got the metal back and the plastic body. It does project a very coherent, tight beam, and it's perfect for hacking and modifying to suit your own requirements. So, what more could you ask for? It's really not bad for the money. I set it to a thermal test, so here is the thermal test. It shows that the chip itself is actually staying pretty cool. It's about 36 degrees Celsius. The diode on the power supply is the bit that gets hottest, about 70 degrees Celsius, which isn't really that bad for a diode. I mean, I wish they'd run a bit cooler, but it's not bad overall. Uh, other things I'd like to mention, hopefully this is going to expose. All right, let's go back down to about here. Uh, let's zoom out. Uh, let's turn the light off. That'd be quite good as well, so we can actually see what's happening. The thing that comes to mind putting this back together is that these screws actually go, the, where they clamp the LED on, they actually come very close to the pads either side, the plus and minus pads. So there is a possibility they could short that to the case. I don't know if that would really be an issue, unless you shorted both at once and it sort of bridged it out. But that's something that I'd actually, under these washers, I'd rather have something like a, a fibre washer. These screws, should I say, a fibre washer, just so it holds it in place without actually shorting anything. That also would allow a tiny bit of expansion, contraction and movement on that. Um, so the power supply runs cool. It runs the LED at just, you know, in the region of about 2 watts-ish. Um, so... Yep, it's still winning. I mean, that's. Uh, I'm surprised the power supply isn't getting too hot. It is a dedicated chip in it, so that'll be why it's running quite efficiently. But there we go. It's not a bad little light. It's the video that keeps on giving, and it's just gone pink. So here's what I did. I used, well, let's zoom down a wee tad in this so you can actually see. I used a Luxian style star with a grow light LED just because I like that strange pink colour they like to call full spectrum, but it really isn't full spectrum. And I noticed a couple of things. Firstly, if you compare the two LEDs, this one's very low profile, the other one sticks up quite a bit, and of course it's got a lens over the front, and that disturbed things optically quite a lot. A lot of people ask me if they can take their existing disco lights and just stick an LED in them and get the same effect. And the answer is, it's a really complex thing. The traditional disco lights had tungsten lamps and they had these tiny little filaments at a very precise position in the optical path. The LED is not in the style of a filament. It's, it tends to be a much larger area, particularly if you use something like one of these big chips. Let me just pull one of these big chips out particularly one of these driverless chips. So instead of having a small point source, you've got a very large array of the LEDs in there, and it's not going to work in the existing optical system. For the best focus, you generally need to produce a very sharp point of light. So it follows that uh, when I modified this and put that in, it didn't quite match the optical system, so I had to change the spacers. And it turns out the original spacers, there were three 4mm and one 5mm, so that thing was actually kicked over at an angle. I'm not sure if that was deliberate to fine-tune it in a sort of half-step increment, or it's just those the spacers they had knocking about. I had to replace the spacers with four, noting that this is live, four 3mm spacers, so I've ended up with a total of 12mm, which raised this up quite a bit.
And I had to just shave a bit of plastic off the sides of these because there were little rags where the sprues from the moulding uh, were in there and they just basically touched the side of the case here. But that's okay. I just shaved them off and it's fine now. I managed to get a decent focus on that, but the divergence is just that little bit wider because the optical system is different. It produces a good beam of light, as I'll show you afterwards. I'll point at the bench once I've got the cover on. I could put the cover on right now. I could just hold it on and point at the bench and, you know, you get that fairly tightish. It's kind of swampy out with the... Also because it's very close, it's kind of like putting a flare on the edge of it. But if I point at the wall here, I'm getting a fairly precise dot. And if I, you know, I could have fine-tuned it further. And if you fine-tune it far enough, you actually get a circle with two little lines. Can I do that here? Can I get that? I don't think I'm going to be able to fine-tune it enough for you to actually see that. But uh, it fine-tuned it enough you could see little bond wires going on to the LEDs at either side. Uh, I extend the screws. They are standard uh, 3mm M3s. I reheat shrink sleeved the driver, but I used clear heat shrink and I also just heated it at the end so it just cupped in so it wrapped it but it's not clamped right down the reason for that is because i didn't want to squish that capacitor against the hot chip uh, i just thought it was going to run a lot cooler that way uh, other things worthy of note the cable that comes in the mains cable has a bit of heat shrink where it's been soldered and one of them has a fairly stressed joint it's you know you can feel the slight peak and that is the live one. Noting that I'm holding this metal case, but it isn't grounded, that's also in a way a bit of an issue, but ultimately as long as you use common sense, if you repackage one of these, it's not a huge issue. Um, so it's worth noting that these, these uh, heat shrink sleeves may end up with a sharp point that could touch the metal case, and also more likely, when this uh, gets screwed on, it's very possible that a cable could get nipped against this metal edge here and it could actually pierce the cable and make the whole case live. It makes me think, given what we've seen from other products, there are probably a few of these knocking about with the back plate live and people might not realise that because it is painted and they're not usually touching it when it's on like I'm doing at the moment. So I'm going to screw this together now. I'm just going to pause momentarily while I screw it. No, I'm not going to pause. I'm just going to slap it on right now, making sure those wires are out of the way. I rooted them a slight different route in here just to try and avoid nipping them. So let's pop this on. Oh, the other thing I did was when I clamped the LED down, I used this little tiny fiber, red fiber washer on either side of the LED to clamp it in place, just so that it doesn't actually um, just... Uh, it doesn't actually short out the pads because it is a possible thing that could happen. So I'll put a couple of screws in this. I'm not sure why. I'm putting a couple of screws in this right now because ultimately all I can do is point it at the bench. But I suppose I could go to as far as I can get away from the bench. I have to put a few screws in. And I could try and project a beam the bench and show you. But I will say that the, the size of this chip and the fact it doesn't have the lens means that the Cree-ish type chip is very clearly the best option for this because it produces a fairly high intensity from a very sharp point source of light. But anyway, I have got this more or less together. Let's try and get as far away as I can. Let's uh, let go of the light while I'm touching the grounded lighting here. Let's take the exposure off. And let's go back as far as possible. Y yeah, there is a bit. You're actually seeing the actual case of the LED here. If I point that at the wall, I don't... Oh, I do, actually. I see a halo around it. So you are actually seeing an image of the lens, and that's what happens. That's why you saw the square chip with this one, because uh, it was projecting an image of the square chip. But yeah, this is what you're getting. It's quite interesting. You can actually see the little wings in that as well. It is basically projecting an image of the LED. But there we go. Uh, it is hackable. The light's about to come back. Watch your eyes. Uh, it's very hackable, it's tunable, you could put any colour of LED you want in, it's fully serviceable, you can put new drivers in, you can put new LEDs in, it's got decent optics, so, you know, as a little customised light, this is a good project case, and that's always good, you know, because it's nice to be able to actually build stuff based on an existing cheap unit that's very hackable.